Hello everybody, this is Amit from Miracle Corporate Solutions Private Limited. We will be discussing Advanced Embedded Linux Training Workshop provided by Miracle Corporate Solutions to all the professionals having good amount of experience on C programming. I uh, will be covering ARM9 board and application development uh, processes for uh, embedded devices through this RT Linux system and uh, just have a quick glance of uh, the kind of RTOS is it. So embedded Linux is the use of a Linux operating system in embedded computers such as mobile phones, personal digital assistants, media players, boxes and other consumer electronics devices, networking equipments like routers, gateways, machine control, industrial automations, navigations, equipments, uh, navigation equipments and medical instruments according to survey conducted by Venture Development Corporation Linux was used by 18% of the embedded engineers. So Linux is a very popular embedded uh, operating system for uh, these kind of devices and because this is open source so, uh, to reduce the cost of the device most of the OEMs they prefer embedded Linux for their equipments. Uh, the most popular uh, device that I can uh, name out over here is Motorola Razr mobile phone. This is an advanced embedded system using an embedded Linux so uh, this internally uses the embedded Linux operating system. Limo is a Linux mobile foundation which was founded in 2006 by Motorola, NEC, Panasonic, Samsung, Docomo and Docomo is entity Docomo and Vodafone to establish a set of interfaces and a standard uh, components to improve the third party mobile phone. So to generalize the kind of mobile platforms we have today, uh, they have created a foundation, Limo foundation and they are actively working for uh, making it better and better every day. The other uh, OEMs uh, would be something like this, Motorola mobile telephones generally based on Montavista. So Motorola is a major contributor in Linux based embedded devices. Uh, they have done good work on it and they have developed a series of mobile phones and other devices like Razer V8, Rockar E2, Rockar E6, A780, A1200 and other open new 1973 or free runners. So and Nokia has launched eight, uh, N810 and and 800 mobile phones uh, which those are Linux based. Google's has already come up with an on Android uh, platform which is a completely embedded Linux based uh, operating platform for mobile phones. Linksys is, is a company they are developing uh, products and devices based on Linux. Panasonic, NEC, NEC develops mobile phones, Philips, UT Starcom and Cisco. So all these companies they are, they are the major uh, uh, developers for uh, Linux based devices and just have a quick glance of the kind of devices uh, we have in the market those are Linux based you can follow this link also uh, where we can get the detailed list of all the devices we have thousands of devices available and millions of products launched in the market so uh, there are some gaming devices and some motors and then some UIs mobile phone UIs or gaming UIs and mobile phones touch screen mobile phones and some equipments and mobile phones you can see that boats some small notepad PCs very good UI based on some um, framework 3d framework 2d framework and game de gaming devices so most of the gaming devices and the mobile phones and the entertaining devices like iPod studio iPod uh, we prefer to use embedded Linux and them because uh, that way we reduce the cost of the device in this training we'll be uh, learning on arm 9 board so this is the board that we'll be following. We have this ARM9 board which is quick byte board and which contains an ARM9 processor and which has other peripherals like uh, Ethernet, USB, MMC slot, serial port and other power controlling ports and JTAG port. So we can uh, debug and we can develop applications on this board just to have an experience li uh, specifications list of this particular board. It looks like this. This is ROHS compliant. It has an ARM9 processor, 180 megahertz, 200 MIPS, ARM9 highly integrated core. This has independent 16 kilobit instruction set and 16 KB data caches, 64 MB SD RAM. And it has 8 MB SPI flash. It has 256 MB parallel NAND flash. It is STMMC compliant, so it supports the STMMC card. This is Ethernet compliant, so it has 10 by 100 Ethernet uh, card in that. USB 2.0 full speed. USB 2.0 full speed device port and host port so it has both the supports and it has infrared support so IDA transceiver then uh, it has parallel LCD interfacing support so you can connect any display unit on it 
and it comes with a inbuilt display unit also then it has rs232 and rs485 serial communication support then it has 16 kilobit kilobyte internal sram and f128 kilobyte internal rom then it has the leds three leds onboard digital temperature sensors it has inbuilt te temperature sensor uh, uh, device external memory interface at headers and uh, it has uh, e-boot u-boot uh, bootloader simple development support on chip real time clock and dmas it has jtag compatibility so we can use jtags for debugging and so many other standard acdc voltage range from standard 2.1 and then jack so these are the specifications that we'll be having for our device and we'll be following this uh, particular board for all our learning over here now let's have a quick uh, glance on the core structure that we are uh, recommending for you over here we'll be learning the real life and embedded linux systems overview of linux strengths and weaknesses design and implementation methodologies then we'll learn that environment setup how to configure uh, the host and target devices then key development board components we'll be learning about all these components that we have just gone through generic architecture of an embedded linux system then we'll learn the os specific uh, things like how it looks how an embedded linux operating system would would look like then how to start a system how to um, uh, types of boot configuration what all kind of bootloaders it supports what is a bootloader and how to write a bootloader and how to make it compatible for the particular board then system memory layout because these all kind of knowledge will require to write your bootloader type of hardware support cross development tool chain other important development tools so we'll be having a quick uh, view and uh, learning of all these topics then uh, internal to linux kernel then how to select a kernel how to configure the kernel how to install the kernel for an embedded device then how to uh, understand the file system contains and basic root file system structure libraries kernel modules kernel images device files main system applications system initialization process then we'll be uh, setting up a, a file system for our uh, particular embedded system board uh, nfs file system or uh, ram disk concepts or camps or jffs2 concepts then we'll uh, set up the bootloader for our device bootloader basics using uh, using lilo and grub and with disk drivers using universal bootloader then setting up networking services like uh, network login through telnet then dynamic configuration using dscp service serving web contents through dscp finally we'll uh, go through the debugging tools that are supported uh, for that particular board debugging applications using gdb standard debugger tracing performance analyzer memory debugging in circuit debugger using jtag interfaces and um, then we'll develop applications and device driver so we'll be developing uh, uh, one application and one device driver for our uh, uh, linux uh, arm 9 board and that that the complete learning which is required for any kind of embedded system application development or sort of device driver development so that we can uh, range and we can pick all those kind of devices that are available in the market so let's have a very good embedded linux learning and miracle all the best thank you very much